Hello legends. In this video, we're gonna be breaking down what context engineering is and how it applies to our NAN workflows. Now, in order for us to understand what context engineering is, we first have to highlight the word context. And the term context actually refers to the context window of the LLM that we're plugging in as the brain for our AI agent. So every LLM model that we have available to us actually has unique strengths and weaknesses. So over here, I'm comparing the O3 model from OpenAI to the GPT 4.1 model. And if we look at the left-hand side, the O3 is strong for reasoning and it's a little bit slow. And the 4.1 is very good at intelligence and it's actually pretty fast as well. If we keep scrolling down, we come across this stat over here, which is context. So the context window is actually the maximum amount of tokens that the LLM can process in any one turn. The O3 model can process up to 200,000 tokens, whereas the 4.1 can process five times more at 1 million tokens per LLM call. Now that's important to us because depending on the core functionality of the agent, if they have to be better at reasoning or if they have to be better at intelligence tasks, then we choose the model and based on the model that we're choosing, we have specific restrictions around how many tokens it can consume. So let's actually take a look at where all these tokens are coming from. When we're giving the AI agent a user request, we're actually sending that request as a bunch of tokens. Whenever we're getting responses from tool calls, we're actually sending that response as a bunch of tokens back into the AI agent step. And same thing with the system instructions. So whatever instructions we give to the AI agent, that is also a collection of tokens that the agent must process within its one cycle. So here's a really helpful image that helps us capture exactly what goes into the context window of an AI agent. So we have everything from the original instructions that we're plugging into the AI agent, any rag that we're connecting up, let's say a Pinecone vector database where we're uploading a bunch of documents, the user prompt, which is the dynamic message that enters at the start of the workflow. We've got available tools. So like connecting to Shopify, connecting to Zendesk, and the output of those tools is actually in a structured JSON format. And then we have this concept of long-term memory and short-term memory. So all these things combined actually accumulate into the context window, which now leaves us with a really simple explanation that context engineering is the delicate art and science of filling the context window with just the right information at the right time for the very next step. So let me try and explain exactly why it was defined as a delicate art and science. So in front of us, I've got a very simple AI agent. The prompt for the agent is to book a meeting between bar and some guests, where the guest is a variable, where at the start of the workflow, we plug in the guest's name. Now the agent has access to three different tools, a contacts tool that the agent can use to get the guest's SMS number and their availability, an SMS tool that the agent can use to communicate with the guest, and then a calendar tool that the agent can use to review Bart's availability and then to book new meetings in. So let's give this agent a run. Now the first thing we're doing is ingesting Steve into the prompt so the agent knows Bart and Steve have to have a meeting. Uh, we go across to our contacts tool to pull out Steve's SMS number and his availability. We bring that back as context into the context window. We then hit the calendar tool to find Bart's availability, which let's say is Monday at 3 p.m. We bring that back as context. We then message Steve and say, hey, does Monday at 3 p.m. work for you? Let us know. And then Steve replies back with more context saying, yep, that's fine. Let's book it in. We then have to hit the calendar tool again to now book that meeting in and then retrieve the um, Google Calendar meeting link. We bring that back as context into the context window. And then we go to Steve and say, hey, Steve, it's all booked in. Here's that meeting link. Bart will chat to you then. Steve replies back saying, awesome, looking forward to it. And then we end the workflow. Okay, so that was a mouthful. Now let's investigate all the different contexts that we plugged into this agent step. The first thing we did was actually generate our prompt, which is in our case, pretty short, but you know, we didn't actually write out which steps have to be followed. Or we didn't actually give out all the tool instructions. So we have the uh, context coming in or the tokens coming in used up by the prompt. We then have Steve, the name of the guest being ingested into the AI agent. And then we had the first tool call for the contacts. We had the context returned here. And then actually for every single tool call, so second, third, fourth, and fifth tool calls, all brought back context into the prompt. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why context engineering is increasing in popularity, because how simple agents that have only a handful of steps and a handful of tools can actually accumulate a lot of context during their operation. Now that example that we looked at is actually a very basic example of a long running task. And actually I wouldn't even call it a long running task. I would just say it's a very simple task that had about five steps that I had to complete before the actual workflow was finished. Now I think it's super important to highlight this because the backbone of context engineering is all about managing the context window for agents that have multiple steps, a bunch of different tools, a bunch of different things that are plugging into their context window that, that as the agent progresses through its list of tasks, it actually continuously accumulates tokens into the context window. 
Just like we saw over here, after each tool call, we had more context, more context, more context being plugged back into the AI agent step. Now for us who are building within NAN, I actually don't think context engineering is super important because we're not building massive agents. Like a lot of the agents we're building are gonna have five or 10 steps and they might have a bunch of tools connected to them. But in general, I think a lot of us are actually building out workflows that will have uh, multiple agent systems. Like it's so easy to build an NAN that you can just isolate specific tasks and have like really specialized agents that have one or two tasks to complete, have only one or two tools connected to them. And therefore we're already doing a lot of context engineering or context management when we're building within NAN. And actually the bigger picture with NAN is that we're using this tool to help automate tasks. We're not actually building bespoke agent systems that can go off and operate autonomously. We're building these workflows that will have AI agents within them or LLM steps within them to help us process requests, to help us with reasoning, make decisions, which means that we don't really have a problem with managing context windows in NAN. Like I'm not sure how many of you building agents where they're constantly breaking because there's too much context being plugged into it. So as you can see, we're not actually building agents that have long running tasks. Instead, we're maybe building workflows that have long running tasks where each workflow might have a number of different agents within it, which are all specialized. They only have two or three tasks to complete, a handful of tools plugged into them, and we don't really have a problem with popping that context window. So to contrast that, I actually think that the context engineering term more applies to these bespoke AI agents that you might've already experienced or used in some of the tools that you're using. So we're just going through GitHub over here. I'm just gonna scroll through and see um, if we can see any of these AI agents. So Crew AI is one of these AI agent platforms. Microsoft has one of their co-pilots, which will actually do long running tasks. I would also actually group in something like a chat GPT or a cloud conversation into one of these long running tasks because you could actually sit here and then exchange hundreds and hundreds of messages across weeks and months and then somehow ChatGPT can remember the very first message that you sent at the start of the conversation. So when it comes to that, that's actually a long running task that OpenAI would have had to solve very early on about somehow maintaining, managing context, not popping their context bubble because if you literally plugged in thousands of messages into an AI agent step, for example, like into one of the original OpenAI models, like the GPT 3.5, that context window was literally 16,000 tokens. Again, comparing it to 1 million tokens. So this was tiny and actually OpenAI probably would have had to be doing context engineering years ago. Another example for these really dynamic long running task agents is if you're using something like Cursor. So I use Cursor to help me write code and you have this little chat interface. It's very similar to like ChatGPT, but this is geared towards actually helping you code and write code for the cursor platform. So I could sit here and have like really long code bases. I can plug in all these different files as context into this AI agent step. So somehow cursor in the backend had to employ a number of different context management protocols in order to still maintain all the context from all the files and then be able to offer suggestions, corrections, edits, um, and generate even more code for you. So then to really beat down this point, um, in NAN, we're not actually building these long running agents. So I don't think a lot of context engineering really applies to us. It is a nice term and a nice concept to try and understand, um, but I don't think we need to change anything in NAN for how we're building our agents and workflows. Now I'll spend the last portion of this video actually discussing uh, two different types of context engineering strategies. The first is this scratch pad strategy, which um, I don't think we can really do an NAN or we can't really do it super easily. So I'll actually be demoing that over here just to give you an idea of, you know, if you have a long running agent, how do you manage the context? But then the second thing I'll look at is a little bit more relevant to NAN. So for compressing context, this strategy is all about summarizing and trimming context that you're bringing into the workflow, kind of chopping it up and only using the relevant parts. And then the isolate context strategy is all about instead of plugging in uh, multiple different types of context into one agent, build multiple agent systems, and then you know give one agent a little bit of context and a specific task, and the other agent some other context and another task to complete. So the idea of a scratchpad is actually the most interesting to me. Um, it's like, imagine you own a pizza shop and then you get a call from a customer, and you're like, cool, who am I speaking with? You know then the name. Um, yeah, what kind of pizzas can I get you? Okay, a margarita with ham. You note it down on a piece of paper as well. Um, and then you know what time do you wanna do pickup? Okay, 9 p.m., no worries. So for that specific phone call, that scratch pad, that piece of note that you're writing those um, you know, pizza order on is important because then you actually start making the pizza and you process it. But once it's processed, you just throw that note away. So for that specific runtime, for that specific operation on the phone call, for that workflow, so to speak, um, that scratch pad is relevant. But then as soon as you get the next call from the next customer, you, know, you get the new scratch pad, it's completely blank. 
and you take your next set of notes. So for us, the scratchpad idea is actually super interesting. And um, if you guys know of a way to do this in NAN, that's super simple. Um, I would love to hear about it and maybe NAN will release something like this in the future. Um, but let's say we start the workflow again. So we get Steve coming into the prompt. And the first thing we do is we go across, we get Steve's SMS number and his availability. We bring it back as context. Now, instead of going to the next step and going to the calendar, we would actually just write this context. So like, okay, we're meeting with Steve, his um, mobile number is this, and his availability is this. We would write it to this temporary notepad, to this scratch pad, and then we can kind of like refresh the workflow. And then we can continue from step two, which is now hitting across to this calendar, getting Bart's availability. And instead of again, going to this SMS, we can just temporarily store that in this scratch pad. So now every time we're running these steps over here for this AI agent, instead of accumulating the tokens and having a bucket within our context window, we've got a totally separate context window, so to speak, that's holding all this extra information for us. And now the idea is that when we get to step three to SMS Steve, all we would need to do is first bring in Steve's information, maybe bring in that snippet of when Bard is available and now send an SMS to Steve and then bring his response back. And then once again, write Steve's, you know, okay, cool, Steve agrees, he's, he's cool to meet with Bart at Monday at 3 p.m. Write it back to the scratch pad, clear everything, clear the cache. And now we can go to our next step, which is just bringing in the information that Steve is available at that time. We book it into the calendar, we get the confirmation and the meeting link, and we write it back to the scratch pad. So, so I'm not gonna finish off the rest of this agent workflow, but you can see now how this scratch pad is actually holding all this additional context for us. And we're using it strategically to actually bring in only the necessary context for the very next step. And that's why we're coming back to this statement of the delicate art and science of filling the context window with just the right information for the very next step. And then all that hard work that we're doing with managing the context is gonna help us avoid hallucination. So the agent's not gonna be making up information because it only has that concise snippet of information that relates to the request. We're also not gonna be overwhelming the agent because let's say we message Steven and he actually turns out that he's not available at Monday at 3 p.m. He responds back to us. We go back to the calendar, we try to find a new time, we come back to Steve, He's like, actually that day works, but that time doesn't work for me. Can we do um, Tuesday at 3 p.m. instead of Tuesday at 1 p.m.? He brings it back, we go back to the calendar. So you can see here that very quickly, we need a strategy that helps us manage how many tokens are coming back to the AI agent step. Because eventually after five, 10 messages with Steve where he constantly says it's not a good time, maybe the agent's gonna start, yes, hallucinating, but um, it might actually forget which step it's up to. And then maybe one time Steve will say, yep, I'm available at that time. And then the agent might actually forget to book it into the calendar and instead it will just finish the operation completely. And then Steve will be twiddling his thumbs waiting for Bart to show up to the meeting and Bart will never show up to the meeting. And now coming back to NAN and kind of looking at how we manage different types of context as we introduce them to the workflow. So let's say we have a workflow that actually has two different types of memory. The first type of memory is an agent level memory where we're only documenting the chat message from the user and then any response from the agent back to the user is going into this simple memory. But anything outside of the agent step, so anything on this side and on this side is not actually logged within the simple memory. Now for us to be logging this workflow level memory, let's say we wanna use a database like something like Google Sheet or Superbase. And at the end of the workflow, we're documenting all the key information. So maybe the agent response, maybe the customer's response, but then maybe we also have some logic along the way over here where we generate different variables and we just log all of that in a Google Sheet. Now that means at the start of the workflow, we can actually recall that information and bring it back into the canvas. And when we bring it into the canvas at this side of the agent, we can actually plug it in as memory for the agent to use. So some of the cool stuff over here is about summarizing that context that we're bringing in from Google Sheet or trimming that context, which means we will do something like this. So let's say, for example, we have this chat agent that accumulates hundreds and hundreds of turns or hundreds and hundreds of messages between the agent and a customer. We're logging all that into a Google Sheet. So now when we're turning that information from this Google Sheet, we've got like 100 messages returned. Instead of us giving all those 100 messages into this AI agent step, we could isolate a portion of those messages. So we could either do that by mapping some of these variables into a field, which we might call variable one and we would just drag and drop whatever information we want into this value over here. And then we would just reference this variable, so this variable number one within this AI agent step. So we would come into here, we would go define below, and we would drag the field from the edit field into here, and probably actually also um, drag the chat message as well, just so we have the uh, user input and the memory input as this uh, user message input. So that's one way of isolating that information before it comes into the agent. But now the next thing we wanna look at is this thing over here, so summarizing the context. 
So now let's say we have those 100 messages and instead of just picking out one or two messages and putting them into this edit fields block, we might actually want to get an LLM step to synthesize all 100 messages and just give us like a couple of sentence summary of what's going on. In which case we would get this basic LLM chain. We would plug in all the 100 returned rows. We would say, please summarize this in like two or three sentences. And then we could pass this information into this edit fields block and then plug it into this AI agent. So then the agent has an overview of all the previous uh, communications we had with the customer. Interestingly, those concepts also apply for this scratch pad situation here because we don't always need to return back all the information that we have on a scratch pad. Like when we were SMSing the customer for the very first time, all we need is the contact information for Steve, so his SMS number, as well as the calendar availability for Bart, which we would then message to Steve. Well, let's say the final step where Steve's actually like, yep, cool, Monday at 3 p.m. works for me. All we need to do is give Steve's contact information as well as the Monday at 3 p.m. slot and then book that back in. So this is actually a lot less tokens, a lot less context than giving absolutely everything. And what we were doing there is actually employing this trim context strategy and only giving the relevant tokens to the LLM for that specific step. And then the final thing that I think we're all already doing is actually building out these multi-agent systems. So I'm actually all for the idea of org char agents where instead of just building one agent that completes every single responsibility that you might have in your business, instead of doing that, we actually either isolate specific tasks and just build workflows or agents that help us complete those specific tasks. And once again, for NAN, we're doing task management. We're kind of like automating, finding data, creating reports, posting on social media, all that kind of stuff is just one simple task. So really, I'm a big proponent of building agents that have one or two simple tasks to complete instead of building an agent that has like 10 different roles. And that's actually what you do when you're building a business. You're not just hiring one person to complete uh, every single responsibility, every single task in that business, like everything from accounts to marketing to customer support to product and service development. Actually, you're finding high level people to just manage that function for you. So the same concept for us. Let's assume that we over here have um, summarized some of this information from here. And instead of just giving us one variable output, we might say, um, give me a summary of all the times that Bart spoke about a blue car and then all the summary of when Bart spoke about a red car. And then we would split that up into two different variables. So over here, we would have variable one mapped from this basic LLM chain, maybe variable two as well. And then all we're doing is just splitting up the workflow where we have an AI agent at the top, which gets variable one. So like a uh, blue car workflow. He has a specific set of instructions over here uh, using the system prompt. We only give him a concise set of tools and it gives us a specific output over here. And then agent two has, uh, was it red cars and a specific task about red cars and specific tools. And then we would just kind of merge this stuff at the very end like this. And now we can continue our workflow and maybe even have a third agent to synthesize this information. But as you can see, we can actually still work with large amounts of data and just split it up into these multiple agent systems. So yeah, to summarize context engineering for NAN, I don't think you need to be changing anything about your workflows. We're not building long running agents. We're actually just building workflows that have agents within them. But yeah, some of this stuff is interesting to see and think about. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you've watched to the end, you're probably one of the people that watch my channel regularly. Um, I was MIA recently because I was moving houses, so I didn't make any videos for uh, probably around two weeks. Um, anyway, as you can see behind me, I've got a different background. I might still be setting up exactly where I'm gonna be recording in this new place. Um, try to get something nice or some nice lighting behind me to look at, or I might just do what I normally do and just go caveman mode and just keep it completely blank like it is. But Anyway, it's nice to be back and nice to be making these videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.